He said, you have heard it say, hate your enemies, love those that bless you. He said, but I say, bless your enemies. Because I didn't say the first one. So let me put the record straight. In Matthew chapter 5, the entire teaching of Matthew 5 is Jesus putting the record straight. I'm teaching here. Matthew 5 is Jesus correcting Moses. You have read, but I say. You have read, but... And everything is said contradicted what you read. Then to make matters worse, he started healing on the Sabbath day. Which is against the law. Then they said to Jesus, why are you doing a miracle on Sabbath day? He said, the Sabbath man is not made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath is made for man. Moreover, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. He's putting the record straight. He's putting the record straight. In Luke chapter 9, hey, <laughs> Jesus wants to go to a city. He wants to go to a city to do crusade. And a particular access city said he cannot pass through. They blocked their town. And Jesus wanted to pass through. They blocked their town and said, you cannot come through our town. The disciples came and said, Jesus, look at those stupid people in that village. This way will have been shorter for us. But they have locked their city. Jesus said, leave them alone. They said, no. Uh -uh, don't disappoint us. Elijah when some people confronted him he commanded fire to come from heaven jesus i think what you should do is you are better than elijah elijah is a boy to you how can elijah not take it you take it let us command fire to wipe away the village so we can pass jesus said shut up you don't know what spirit you are that means if jesus was here in the time of elijah he would have rebuked elijah for calling fire down because he never changes he's the same yesterday today and forever so if he rebuked them for that in luke he will have rebuked elijah for that so that's why when you pray lord send another elijah here the question i'm asking is to come and do what what is elijah coming to do how can sons be on ground and you're calling for servants how can sons be here and you're calling for servants these are not the days of the manifestation of servants these are the days of the manifestation of the sons now are we the sons somebody's not shouting amen here see that look 954 put it up speak in tongues for a second And when his disciples james and john saw this they said lord will thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as elias did but he turned and rebuked them and said you know not what manner of spirit you are god has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying abba father not fire come down the spirit of his son is not crying fire come down the spirit of his son is crying abba father for the son of man is not come to destroy men's lives but to save them and they went to another village he said leave that village let's look another town let's use another side if it's today's church they will start fall and die fall and die by fire by fire be roasted be cooked be roasted anybody praying that prayer is an agent of satan it's an agent of satan you know why sit down john 10 10. the thief cometh not uh, help me but for to steal and stop there god is not the killer no it's the saver so anybody praying for people to die has accepted an appointment in satan's operational system yeah. to assist satan to kill jesus said no i don't kill people and if he didn't kill people he never killed people and he will never kill people because he never changes who is killing people jesus reveals it to us is satan 
who killed people in the old testament satan when the prophet spoke and the ground opened and people were swallowed who was in operation satan but it's a prophet who spoke that's why it worked because he used his authority instead of promoting the kingdom he gave satan a license to wipe away people I'm not here to destroy lives. I am come that you may have life. Not to take away your life. I'm a life giver. I'm not a life taker. The thief is the life taker. I'm teaching here. Sit down, let's talk. Yes, the last enemy sh that shall be destroyed is death. So death is an enemy of God. How can God use it over the people he wants to save? How can God use the last enemy over the people he loves, over the people he died for? Remember, Jesus didn't die for the church. He died for the world. Even the wicked man in your village, the will of God for him is to be saved, not to die. That's why all your prayer for witches to die don't work. If he finally works, is one out of a thousand. And that one, it was by chance, Satan took it and went to work. And that's witchcraft. So there's witchcraft happening in churches today. They say seven days fasting. Arresting the arrester. Open your mouth now. Anybody that is behind you, let him die. And everybody will go to work. It's a witchcraft system. Because Jesus is not in that prayer meeting. And the Holy Ghost is not in that prayer meeting. Because the Holy Ghost is here to glorify Jesus. And Jesus is here to save lives. I'm teaching here. I said I'm teaching here. In that same law of Moses, where the Bible talks about what to wear and what not to wear, if you read very carefully, he also said we should not build houses with balcony. It's in that same chapter. He said you should not wear cloth of diverse colors. And he said you should not wear cloth of different materials. He said you should not eat fish with scale. And you should not build steps. And if you break one, you break all and all of us are victims so if that law still binds we are we are hell bound all in the same chapter that is why jesus came to fulfill the demands what the lord demanded jesus came to fulfill how do we know kebatona galatians 4 4 but when the fullness of time was come god sent forth his son made of a woman made under jesus functioned under the law why that was the only way he could fulfill the demands of the law when he fulfilled it he abolished it he put an end on it he took a death nail and nailed it and he said it's over rusticated and now he said the new testament will not be a document i will put it in your heart the new testament is not a document it's in your heart because the new testament is man's access to god free relationship you know me i know you so that's why the focus of prayer in the epistles is prayers on your realities in christ jesus and you know over the years I, I, i've hardly come across a very sound teaching that takes your eyes off things on spiritual realities the first person who introduced me to sound bible praying is the man ew kenyon and i thank god for ew kenyon honestly because so much he taught is centered on the epistles and then kenneth e hagin blessed me so much and taught me how to pray the Pauline prayers. How to pray the Pauline prayers. And I've been praying those prayers for years now. And I still pray them till tomorrow. Till Jesus comes. The Pauline prayers. And I just did a survey of, of books, you know, on prayer. And I discovered that, um, you know, there are not much to find out there. Where prayers are focused on the things that Jesus has made available. In fact, there are more prayers nowadays on die, die, fall and die. Be roasted, be cooked, be cooked, be cooked, be cooked. Then in the prayer book, they will say, say be cooked ten times. Be cooked one, be cooked two, be cooked three, be cooked four. Then the next one they didn't add there is, who will eat? Who will eat? 
who will eat? Who? Because if you're killing and cooking, somebody has to eat it. And a very big pastor in this country, and I don't want to call names because you know I don't call names. A big pastor in this country, very, very dishonest guy, very, very dishonest. He was teaching his church, big church. He said, you know, Jesus told us to pray for our enemies, but he didn't give us prayer points. He said, pray for your enemies, but he didn't say what to pray for. That's dishonest. That's very dishonest. Jesus emphatically told you, bless those that curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. He, he gave you prayer points. So the man said, because Jesus didn't give prayer points, so begin to call fire. Let fire, let thunder, let disaster befall your enemies. No, no. There's no such in the Bible. The guy's just being dishonest. The Bible tells you to bless those who despitefully use you. Pray for those who hate you. Bless them. That's how to pray for them. You pray for them. You bless them. In doing that, you are, you are heaping coals of fire. Now, coals of fire doesn't mean you're making, you're going to put danger on them. Coals of fire simply means you are bringing them into an environment where the gospel will find them. That's what he means by coals of fire. It's a figure of speech. When you pray and bless them, you are creating an environment because it is the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. It is not the danger or judgment of God. So if God wants people to be saved, no matter how bad they are, he treats them nice. He blesses them. He does good things for them. Then they begin to say, in spite of how bad I am, God is still good to me. Why can't I serve God? Because God woos us with his goodness and through his goodness, he brings us to the revelation of himself. Can somebody shout hallelujah?